Before I got into the cruise industry, I was a tour manager taking groups of people on motor coach tours. And I used to read evaluations about what people like and don't like about vacations. And I came to the conclusion that it has nothing to do with where you go. It's all about who you're with. That's what makes or breaks your vacation. So my whole business is based on bringing together like-minded people. So whether that's ravers or rockers or metalheads or salseros or corporate group or a high-end group or yogis, so whatever it is, and using the same framework that I've developed for group crews, obviously each group is completely different in terms of uh, the activities and music and so forth like that. But using the same framework that we've developed to, uh, to grow and uh, expand and scale basically. This is Festival Past Stories, a podcast series is told by the people who create and make festivals come to life. You will go behind the stage, kitchen, or studio door to hear the stories of passion and inspiration that started some of the world's most beloved festivals. Hear the startup stories and how an idea went from what if to what's next. All right, friends, welcome back. This is the Festival Past Stories podcast, and we are produced by Jonah Wright and Challenger Road Media. And of course, always presented by Dos Hombres, the artisanal mezcal meant to be shared, created by Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston. Have a drink with us at dosombres.com forward slash delivery. And you ever want to have the opportunity to invest in a product early that could be the next Airbnb? I can see that my guest today is very excited. He wants to hear more. His hat says it all. <laughs> Learn why entrepreneurs and celebrities with exits approaching 10 billion. I've already invested in Festival Pass. Go to invest.festivalpass.com to learn more. And speaking of ever wanted to, how about ever wanted to go on an ever-ending party, a never-ending party, I should say, that floats? Yeah, come on. Right. You know, now it's easy to say yes and fill that void because you, like T-Pain, never thought you'd be on a boat. Well, time to say yes to that, my friend. Sorry, this mic does not have auto-tune. I hope that's okay. But say hello to that and to my guest. It is, or he is, I should say, Jason Bukema, the CEO and founder of Groove Cruise. The hat says Groove Island. We're going to get into all about what Groove Island is. Jason, what is happening? Hey, thanks for having me, Pat. I'm very excited. I'm actually at the board about to get on the ship right now, and I'm I just I love your energy. I feel like I need some dos hombres like you're drinking here. And I think mean, yeah, yeah, look, that's it. And you're and you're welcome to uh, <laughs> share that on the boat, right? It's like it should say, you know, have a drink on us, not with us, but have a drink with us because <laughs> the hombres are always out there. They're always out yeah, there. You're exactly. in Miami, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a yeah. perfect name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you said you're you're in Miami right now. They were just there uh, at Art Basel. So I mean, talk mm-hmm. about a festival uh, in Art Basel. And they were pouring the dos hombres and doing cocktails, and yeah, follow them on uh, on Instagram to see all the stuff that the uh, that the hombres are are all about. And uh, that hat, it looks like you're the first round draft pick of Groove Island. It's like with the first pick <laughs> in the 2022, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> Groove draft. Groove Island selects Jason. All right, awesome Perfect. man. So. So this is this is just an unbelievable concept. I mean, we, we've got basically three things happening here, three different kind of festivals. But how did the concept? And I love this because the guy is always working. He's at the port of Miami. He's going on <laughs> to a new ship to test. Yeah, the, there it is. Right yeah, now. yeah. For those watching this, there he is in Miami at the port of Miami, uh, about to embark on another cruise to see. What uh, are we allowed to say the name of the cruise liner that you're going to be on? Uh, well, I've been on six cruises in the last like six weeks, um, but I've, I've sailed on 137 cruises now, I think is my 138. So, oh my uh, God. yeah, I'm on ships all the time. I'm on ships all the time. But group cruise that we're actually talking about today and what we're sailing at is on Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas, January 2024, out of Port Canaveral. Oh, man. Near Orlando. So it's not, I mean, so it's this this is like there's the slide on there there's all the the stuff that you'd have on on a regular cruise liner and on top of that we've got this never ending party so how did the concept of this whole idea come up in the first place 
Uh, so it started in 2004, so this will be the 18th year, and I just got a group of friends together to go on a cruise, saw how much money the travel agency made off of me, and then I started up my own company. <laughs> and uh, I have like, uh, I could do this the, better and make yeah, money. I can do this way and better. And have fun. Cruises are, cruises are families and old people, and the music and the nightlife sucks. And I just had this vision of what it would be like to have the whole ship and all my friends and really good music. So I uh, graduated from Central Michigan University with a degree in entrepreneurship. So I put a business go, plan go together. Go Chippewas. Yeah, fire up chips. Hey, yeah, go it. chips. That's right. And uh, so I put a business plan together to charter a cruise ship in five years. I had no money. I had no resources. I didn't know anybody in the cruise industry. And long story short, it took me seven years to charter my first ship. And uh, we've done 26 full ships to date of various genres of music from EDM, which is group cruise and rock and heavy metal and salsa and yoga and stuff like that. And uh, basically what that means, chartering a ship, is renting a ship from Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian, Celebrity, Princess Cruises, and the two to 4,000 person events for three to seven days. And we basically transform the ship into a once in a lifetime experience for the community that we're targeting. Unbelievable. Now, this is what I love about <laughs> every one of these, every one of the festival founders, and you are a festival founder, that we're talking to. I mean, these are entrepreneurs, folks. These are small businesses that had great ideas and came out and said, you know what? I could do it better than anybody else. And this is right out of business school. Have you ever gone back? Have you offered the Chippewas to say, I'll come back. I'll talk about the success story about bootstrapping this thing. And those would be fisherman yeah. boots, I would imagine, because you're on a boat. But, yeah. um, you know, th this is now, it, this could be now a case study in how to go from concept to reality, to success, to growth. And I mean, I would imagine the business school wants to uh, want you to come back and flex that degree a little bit and tell people how it's done. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. They've reached out to me a couple of times, but I haven't made it back there yet. But yeah, I have been approached to uh, go speak to a couple of classes up there. But yeah, I'll follow up on that, actually, because that is something I'd like to follow up on and give back to the, to the Chippewa community that, that helped me to be where I'm at. Yeah, send the elevator on back down, as they say. Uh, you know, and I remember the guys who in New York that own Marquee, and, they're, and it's now a gigantic group, the Tau Group, and they've got places in New York, Vegas, L.A., uh, I, th I think a, a few other places as well. But mm -hmm. they were invited by Harvard Business School to go back. And I don't even know if any of them even went to Harvard Business School, but they were invited there to break it down, like, Give us, how does the club make money and how have you been yeah. so successful? Because Marquee in New York, which I'm sure you know uh, very well, uh -huh. um, you know, I'm sure some of the DJs on your ships have played on those stages in New York as Absolutely. well. No uh, question. But, but it was a, it was, it was a successful, because these clubs would open and they'd close six months later. It'd be so hot. And then they just were not. It was just one of the yeah. tougher than the restaurant business was keeping that edge at the nightclub. And they were able to do it for well over a decade. Then they closed it down and reopened it as as kind of like Groove Cruise, but not floating. Right. It's it was close to the uh, Hudson River, but not not on the Hudson <laughs> River. So. Yeah, a lot of respect for those guys. We've worked with them on the past on Groove Island, actually. They did all of our VIP. So I know Jason Strauss and the Tau Group very well. A lot of respect yeah. for those guys. Amazing. And I remember the New York Post published a whole story on it. Uh, so I look forward to to reading your uh, your book. Uh, do you have a name for the book yet? Do you have a name for the business <laughs> manager? Just, just met with somebody yesterday who just is publishing a book, a boxing book with Mike Tyson. So I don't have mine yet, but I've, I got plenty of stories to tell that are, that are quite entertaining. <laughs> so this is festival past stories so the the uh the mic is yours my friend if there's um <laughs> you know i i could jump right to it but i mean when i hear you know my wife listens to this uh show jeff lewis out in california he's out in la every morning jeff lewis live and uh you know he had a couple of shows like um uh, flipping out um and another show as well but he's talking about having the jeff lewis cruise and the peer the people at sirius xm satellite radio were like no way are you bringing our listeners on a on a 72 hour party cruise like he's like fine we won't even leave the dock and they're like no that's just that's just not happening so on on the business side of things just to to talk responsibly for a second i mean that's got to be one of the biggest things when you when you are working with one of these cruise companies that you're like liability insurance and safety for everybody has got to be paramount. So how does sure. that process start? How do you have that conversation with, uh, 
with somebody who's going to underwrite that uh, that program? Uh, so the cruise lines, we have great relationships with, with all of them for 18 years now. So uh, in terms of underwriting it and taking the risk, I mean, it costs millions of dollars to charter a cruise ship. It's not for the faint of heart. It's yeah. a very high barrier to entry. It's a very high break even. Uh, I've had competitors from Live Nation and William Morris and AEG and very few have worked competing against us. Some have and are still around. Most are not. Um, so it's been a it's been an interesting industry. I think just because you've got to have your your heart and soul into it, it's not something you just throw money at and just just say, hey, I'm going to rent a ship and I'm going to fill it with two or three thousand people. It's not it's not that easy. There's festivals that have a hundred thousand people plus that haven't been able to put two thousand three thousand people on a ship. So it's it's not just something that's very turnkey and easy and and uh, so forth like that so it's it's kind of a secret sauce that we've developed over the years so uh, as as the many titles that you have one of the things that you can uh, champion yourself on is being the youngest person to single-handedly charter a cruise ship now where is this like in, is this in the guinness book of records or where is who is the who has uh, who's audited that it's the Guinness Book of Jason's records. <laughs> the Jason's, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a pint of Guinness, actually. And right, it's a exactly. note, that it, yeah, and you, and you had that there in the bottom there. Yeah, of all the cruises that I've seen, the, the chartered ships that I've seen, uh, they've all either been groups of people or, um, yeah, just older people or groups of people or lots of, a lot of money and finances and Live Nation backing or whatever it is. Where we're a small business and we don't have any of that. And then, how did it expand to that? You now have three, not just the Groove Cruise, but you're wearing the Groove Island hat. So that's there on, on the ground. But you now have essentially three festivals going on. So how did it get from once you were able to take on that risk of that first time of chartering that boat, you knew what to do, how to make it happen. But how does it how did it grow threefold? Yeah. So before I got into the cruise industry, I was a tour manager taking groups of people on motor coach tours. And I used to read evaluations about what people like and don't like about vacations. And I came to the conclusion that it has nothing to do with where you go. It's all about who you're with. That's what makes or breaks your vacation. So my whole business is based on being together like-minded people. So whether that's ravers or rockers or metalheads or salseros or uh, whatever it is, or a corporate group, or a high-end group, or um, uh, yogis, so whatever it is, and using the same framework that I've developed for group crews, obviously each group is completely different in terms of uh, the activities and music and so forth like that, but using the same framework that we've developed to, uh, to grow and uh, expand and scale, basically. Now, Orlando is one of those, and that's around the corner. When we started talking... A while back, and I know it took a while for us to get together. So I, I appreciate uh, the patience in making that happen. But uh, for a man who's on the water and in the air, and you know, your trains, planes, and automobiles, and cruise <laughs> ships. So uh, it's uh, we were talking. It was ninety-seven percent sold out. That was probably mm-hmm. a month, a month or so ago. I mean, could I even yeah. get a ticket to it anymore? Uh, you can. We did. Uh, we do have a. Uh, vaccine mandate that came when we did lose a few people we've been gaining about the same amount of people so we're still 97 percent sold uh the good thing with the vaccine mandate and the testing and so forth is that statistically per the cdc cruises right now are safer than being anywhere else in the united states so going to the grocery store going to a hotel going on an airplane are all more dangerous than going on a cruise ship there was an article i think that just came out that 17 cases on norwegian out of a 3,000 passenger ship. And I just, it drives me insane that that's even an article in the newspaper. That, and well, that it's, crap it's a thing, up. right? It's less, less than 1%. It's like 0.05%. It, so if you, yeah. were to, if you were to go and test 3,000 people in Arkansas, Nebraska, or Arkansas or Nebraska or wherever, you're going to find 17 people or 20 people or 50 people or 100 people that have COVID. And it's just like, it's just crazy just because the cruise lines have to test everyone or have chosen to test everyone or have chosen to get make sure everybody's vaccinated to create this extremely safe environment, they get in trouble because they're testing everyone and reporting it to the CDC. It's like bass actually is where it works, but it's all good. Well, <laughs> right. Rant over. And, <laughs> and, and the much. other thing, right, and we will, we, will, we will move off COVID in, in just a second, but 
once people hear cruise ships, because that's like where one of the first cases in the U.S. Oh, yeah. happened, and first they had a cruise ship yeah. off the West Coast, and they're like, don't let it dock. It's not coming here. So, of course, cruise ship is going to be is going to stick to that every time, and it becomes a story. It becomes salacious, and it's like, folks, we've got this quarantine. We've got it under control, and everybody else on the ship is vaccinated and tested negative before they got there, so we're going to keep these people together and and keep it as safe as possible and we know so much more about it now exactly than we did it's not as scary it's like if you're if you're on a boat 18 months ago with and you found out somebody somebody had uh somebody had it you know you might you're like we might as well just jump off the side here because i will have a better <laughs> chance now you're like well you know they're gonna it's they're gonna it's it's gonna be tough but they're gonna be okay we're gonna make it through here yeah. so on that on that great, uh, and let's just put all that stuff behind us because soon we will really finally be able to put all of that behind us. Thank you. And I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I feel it's like we're, tough. we're the, the first industry hit, the hardest hit, and the last to come back. And I mean, the cruise industry is, I think, around 60, 70% of the industry is back in back sailing, and it should be back in full by next summer. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a long time. I would say road, but water, navigation, I don't know. It's been a long road for sure. It's been a deep, a deep road, maybe you could say. A deep road. <laughs> yeah, right. when, exactly. we're talking, when we're talking water. A deep canal. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long, it's been a big canal to cross, to be honest <laughs> exactly. with you. Exactly. So you, 97, 98%, of course, you lost a few people. Unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers won't be on the uh, the cruise. That's too bad for no. Aaron. Uh, um, <laughs> I, well, I think now you can, you can get... Um, uh, Antonio Brown can can join you because now he's he's vaccinated <laughs> and has an authentic. He probably got that that card laminated once he got the real one, for sure, uh, for sure. But he went to Central you know, Michigan too. <laughs> he did. Wow. Okay, folks. We're, we're, all right. You know, we're going to move into. Uh, I got it right here in my in my uh, envelope here. We're going to move into the sports trivia lightning round of uh, Chippewa all right. questions. Right? Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll do that on the next podcast. But, you know, Perfect. with the listeners, the people that are watching this, what they they don't want to hear us talking COVID and Chippewas. They want to hear us talking about what the, the credit for the success of this thing, a well-organized, a safe experience, sure. A fun experience, yeah. 100%. But the DJs, are you going to, would you credit the DJs for a big part of the success? Absolutely, of course. Yeah, we, we generally book uh, house, techno, trance, some bass. And uh, yeah, I mean, people definitely go for the overall vibe of the music and the positive nature that comes with electronic music. And uh, yeah. and there's just a lot more to it. it. All the artists have to do activations. So some may do like a, a snorkeling with them or a, um, we're doing a mental health seminar with a few of them. Um, we're doing like mini golf with so-and-so ride slides with so-and-so or do uh, the bungee trampoline with so-and-so. So each artist has to host an activity. And then there's, uh, there's just I like all that. It's, it's almost like the, it's, it's like, show. yeah, we'd love to have you on groove cruise, but uh, you know, you also have to do the, uh, uh, you know, the potato sack race with uh, right. people <laughs> the on the Lido contest. deck. <laughs> right. yeah. Exactly. yeah. So it's, it's the only event where there's artist fan interaction. So it is very unique and we're very careful with the type of artists that we book because they're, they're out there when they go to, when they go to eat breakfast, lunch and dinner, I mean, they're out there and they got to be cool enough to uh, grab photos with people. And, and the, the people on group crews aren't, aren't, uh, young i guess you could say like it's 21 and up and our average age is around 30 so it's wow. not a young i would crowd. not have guessed that yeah it's not a younger crowd and, and they're not like uh, it's just it's just a different vibe and that we've created over the last 18 years and the, the community and the culture is really what what keeps people coming back is just to see their friends and and that love and positivity and and uh yeah i'm just getting excited just thinking about just being back with everybody yeah. it's really become like a family for sure so you said the culture and the family and these DJs have to fit that right mold. So besides having 500 million followers on Instagram or whatever, uh, that's a lot. 500 million would definitely be a lot. Um, Kim Kardashian might say, wow, that's a lot of followers. But so how do you select these DJs? Uh, so we look at their trend and how they're, how much tickets are selling, how much their, their ticket sales are for, what type of venues are playing. And then also, surveys so we're very in tune and very all about like 
listening to our captains. Everybody on the ship is the captain. They're the most important person in the world. They steer the ship. They tell us where to go. They tell us what destinations to go to. They tell us what cruise line to choose. And they tell us what artists to book. And I found that to be a pretty successful formula in terms of... Uh, <laughs> hey, it's it's mayhem at the Miami successful. port right yeah, now. We got we got a happy birthday going on. I don't know what's going on. So, Look, hey, the thing, port is a festival a on the way to the festival, is what if it is. This was group cruise, actually, we would have a DJ here in the terminal as people are waiting to get on, and it would be complete mayhem. And here, so this is a, this is pretty chill. <laughs> so, it, so that's what you do. So before they even get on the boat. They're already getting the taste of one of these DJs. Oh yeah, so absolutely. So, uh, yeah. so like an onboarding DJ, we'll say. So somebody who's uh, who's getting everybody excited, like a warm up comic to uh, to before Jimmy Fallon comes out or something like that. <laughs> um, uh-huh. So, would you ever give that job right there, like that uh, that that sort of like warm up the crowd DJ? Would you ever give that to like? Because I'm sure there's DJs you select them. Uh, and as you said, the captains, and I want to, we're going to get to what the cat, everybody is the captain. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second, but mm-hmm. you've know, got this criteria. You want to pick these, these great DJs that have that fit into the culture and the family and everything. But do you ever have somebody who's like an up and coming DJ and say, I'll do anything to get on this cruise and perform in front of this audience. And would you give yeah. them that kind of shot? Like, how about you be the onboarding guy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've launched or helped launch uh, multiple artist careers. And uh, yeah, a lot of up and coming artists have either had their first gigs on group cruise. Uh, one of them, they're one of these two guys called uh, Electric Polar Bears. They had their first group, first gig ever on group cruise. And then they just played uh, Paris Hilton's wedding uh, two weeks ago oh. with Diplo. <laughs> so it's kind of, Electric it's Polar kind of, Bears? Yeah, they're called the Electric Polar Bears. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's a few artists like that that have, either had uh, uh we also do dj contests as well to find up and coming artists and um and yeah just listening to our to our uh crew, cruise family or the captains and just uh seeing what's out there and and we've also did a lot of uh, twitch live streaming as well throughout the pandemic because we couldn't sail anywhere so we were doing a lot of twitch um yeah. live streams and called them virtual sail aways to find up and coming artists as well that's amazing so you say the captain and everybody's the captain Pat Tully comes on the trip. How am I the captain? What do I get to decide that we do? So it's a, it's a feeling that you're the most important person to us. So any interaction that you have with the wet travel staff and wet is a word in the dictionary that means to excite or to stimulate. It's W-H-E-T. The like appetite. Wet your appetite. Exactly. <laughs> like wet your appetite. And That's why so I had lunch have, before this. I wetted my appetite just to get uh, to warm up. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so when you call us, you're calling captain support. When you email us, you're emailing captain support. And uh, we just treat every person that walks on the ship as the most important person and make them feel good. And um, yeah, that's, I think that's something that's really set us apart as our customer service or captain support, as we call it. So if we all decide, because there's themes, there's the there are yes. themes every on every on these cruises, there's themes every day. And every night, yes, different themes is. during the day, different themes at night. Mm-hmm. Do the captains select the themes? Yes, they do. So uh, we do surveys and then we'll, we'll have them vote on which ones and which days and so forth like that. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What if, has anyone ever protested one of the themes? Has one of the themes oh, yeah, ever just, you know, because uh, like, you're like, I can't believe that offended anybody. It's the same thing with the artist lineups. Like no matter who we book, we could book like <laughs> top 10 biggest artists in the world and they'll be like, yeah, oh, those are all popular DJs. We don't like them. Or it's like, uh, no matter what um, uh, themes we choose as well, like we've done, uh, we have Area 69 on this one. Um, we've got a Disney one that's called uh, 50 Shades of Disney. <laughs> Oh God. All right. All right. Stop right there. Stop right there. Disney just got dirty. What's happening with 50 shades of Disney? Uh, you gotta be there. To, you gotta be, it's, it's like, it's like trying to explain to somebody what Vegas is like, who's never been to Vegas. It's like 50 shades of Disney theme party is, is just. Now let me just and hold on. Cause it, it'll interest. Yeah. It'll help people <laughs> visualize it a little bit more. Is this a daytime or an evening party? I think that one's an evening party. Well, there we go. Now it's now I now everything I I have to reset and go 
go deeper <laughs> into the gutter to see uh, what's happening on, but still very, very exciting. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. I, I, the people plan their costumes for months and months in advance and, the, and, the, and they really get into it. Uh, most people, not everybody, of course, you can do whatever you want on group cruise. Uh, I think there's an 80s prom party, there's a team up event. So you can get, even if you don't have anybody, there's teams of people that dress in groups, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, uh, represent when you're getting on, which is kind of like a non cheesy icebreaker. Uh, so you can wear your Chippewas gear getting on the ship so everybody knows you're Chippewa. All right. Or whatever city or town or country you're representing, um, you can represent that. And uh, and then, yeah, there's some other things, too, that are slipping in my mind. We have an 80s prom, too, on this one. And the 80s prom is clearly uh, in the evening. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So are there DJs? I mean, like, you know, I, I, I'm a, I grew up in the 80s, so uh, that's... You know, you, you got me, you got me right there, but what, a, what is like, is there a DJ, a house DJ or, you know, an EDM DJ that also specializes in bringing, you know, the eighties into EDM? Yeah. So a lot of the artists do uh, produce and make their own mixes. So um, another, is there another birthday party breaking out? Yeah. It sounds like there's another birthday party. You're on. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the artists will have uh, mixes uh, that they create to hip hop tracks and uh, 80s tracks and old school tracks that they'll, that they'll make into today's dance music tracks with the beats of today, if you will. So you say that, and it sounds like this is a, almost a rhetorical question, but you say the guests are never going to get bored on the cruise. So just never. get bring me through. Bring me through, because there's, there's themes through the day and night. If there is a typical day, Walk me onto the plank of the ship, uh, or the the get the the getway, the getaway, the getaway. Gangway. Gangway. Look at me, look at me. I'm, I'm you didn't you I'm, didn't want to go there, but you, you I had to push you a little bit. You yeah, knew. yeah. You knew it was I the mean, gangway. It is the gangway. It's just again, I, I think that's one of the Fifty Shades of uh, Disney is the gangway. Uh, exactly, for sure. For yeah. Sure. So what is what's so what is it like if there is such a thing as a typical day? At least there's a schedule, right? So you've got a oh, schedule. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so so yeah. walk me walk me through the. I'm sure halfway through the morning, the schedule is ripped up, and it's like, all right, pretty instead much, we're doing this. Much, but yeah. <laughs> some people are kind of the ringleaders of their group, and they've got every minute planned out and where they're <laughs> going to be and how they're going to do it. But yeah, a lot of that goes out the window once you get rolling. So you get on the ship, you get greeted by some some beautiful uh, performers and some costume outfits and things like that. And then the music's already jumping in, even in the terminal before you can get on the ship. Uh, once you get on the ship, you do what's called a muster drill, which is where you do a safety briefing real quick. You go to your area for that. And then you go to your room, drop off your um, luggage, and then you head up to the pool deck. Pool deck's rocking and rolling. And uh, we sail away from the port. Port Canaveral is uh, near Orlando, which is where we're sailing from this January. Uh -huh. So you sail away. We've got an amazing sun, sunset sail away uh, party that we do. And then um, as the night evolves, we've got around, let's say, six to eight different venues going on throughout the, throughout the ship. So you've got uh, different styles of music, uh, headliners, up and coming artists, and uh, you just kind of mosey around and sometimes you just pop into just random parties or maybe there's a bingo. So we have a bingo revival party with this crazy guy doing bingo. We've got different activities over here and pop-up parties and pop-up shows. And sometimes people are partying in their rooms and the suites or um, just random things. Can definitely, sometimes the uh, elevator twister has broken out a few times before. Is there uh, any other kind of the twister? In the, in the, in the, uh, uh, we'd have a giant twister and we did a fireball twister event uh, with this <laughs> giant, giant twister mat. Or maybe it's four put together or something. I don't remember, but... Yeah, there's always fun stuff that we do like that. That's so you uh, mentioned, very unique to group cruise. Yeah, and, and you mentioned people head to their rooms to drop off their bags. Uh, besides mm -hmm. the late night parties, is that like the last time anybody sees the inside of their cabin <laughs> when they drop their luggage off? <laughs> Not really. I mean, you go back, you take a shower, you may take a nap, depending on, depending on what your stamina is. Uh, some people go too hard the first night. That's one thing that I recommend if you're a uh, virgin or a newbie 
is the pace yourself the first night. Some people go so hard the first night. They get so excited. They've been planning this thing for 8, 10, 12 months. And they're finally, yeah. well, 24 months now. So the last one was two years ago. And they've been planning this out and just envisioning what it's going to be like. And they're so excited. And then they just go too hard. Pass out at like 8 o'clock. But the good thing is that if you wake up at 6 a.m., there's still something going on for the sunrise. And there's still people <laughs> raging and having, having the time of their life. And sunrise parties are definitely not to be missed. So what goes on at a sunrise party? Uh, it's generally like a tech, techno or tech house music. And it's just a very like groovy, dancey, just head bobbing vibe. And just everybody's just having a ball. And the cool thing about a cruise ship versus a regular festival is you've got uh, food 24 hours a day. So you can walk up there with your plate of bacon and, and the sun's coming up here in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> you have an umbrella drink in your hand. And uh, everybody around is positive and just dancing and loving life and just forgetting all the forgetting the real world because it's really just an escape from reality. And it's just not it's like it's not real, really. especially the sunrise party. It's just it's a very euphoric feeling to look around 360 around and see ocean. And then all of a sudden the sun slowly starts coming up and, and bringing light to the next day. And it's, it's I get chills just thinking about it right now. Actually. You're ready. You're always ready I'm, to get back out. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I am ready. So you said earlier you were teasing us with a couple of stories. Um, I'm sure there are most of them will go in into that book where you were talking about uh, that book will, that will come out one day and I'd like an autographed copy. Thank you very much. But oh, sure. first edition, please. But give me an example of I mean, there's always it's like, as you said, there's always somebody who goes too hard on night number one. <laughs> So there's always that guy or that girl. It's like, oh, you don't, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that girl. Right. But is it like, you know, is, is there like almost like a checklist of stuff every year where you're like, Oh, that just happened. Oh, that just happened. <laughs> no matter how much we prepare and how much we're like, this might happen or that might happen. There's always something new every time that is just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> so is there something that you can share like uh not you know one of the one of the craziest stories that uh because i guess from a social media standpoint people are allowed to it's all so much of this is user generated content that's getting out there to other people yeah so it's whatever you do on the boat probably won't stay on the boat <laughs> these days not so much uh, no which is good in that uh so there was one moment that I remember I was in a ship meeting with the ship staff and I think it was the hotel director that kind of runs the whole ship. Uh, and he said, you know, we got to go up to the suite. And I'm like, okay, what's going on up there? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. And, and um, we kind of look out the, the window there and there was like some soap running down the ship, down the window. And then I'm just like, why is there soap coming down the side of the window? Are they cleaning or something? So we go up to the suite and uh, we walk in and somebody had finagled a way to get on a, um, a foam machine. And so on the, on the balcony of the suite is a hot tub and it's all just a area that they filled with soap and from the foam machine. So it's up to like your chest or neck and in foam. And there's all these people in there and girls and then stripper pole, and like all this stuff. And, um, it was all in good fun. So that's why I like to keep tell this story because uh, it's all in good fun. And uh, the director was just like, you got to be kidding me. So we laughed it off. They took the machine, obviously, and, and so forth. But um, it was just kind of funny. And, and uh, we were just like, man, this ship's never been, this, this suite's never been as clean in its entire life <laughs> than it is right now. It's yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, finally, we can use that hot tub again. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We had a deep cleaning. <laughs> I just remember walking in there with the, the, the you know, the white shirted uh, uh, ship captains, if you will, not captain, but uh, executive team. <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Well, folks, that's what it's gonna, that's what it's going to be all about, you know. For all the festival <laughs> friends out there, fans of festivals, I mean, this is you don't you don't hear this at Bonnaroo, you don't hear this at these other no, festivals. This is where, this is where it's happening. 
It's a lot me. more unique. Yeah. It's a lot more boutique. It's a smaller group of people, 3,000 people. You get to see people over and over again. That's why I say one of the biggest differences is you actually get to build relationships and have really strong connections with people. And a lot of those become, we had six proposals, three weddings on the last group cruise. Wow. Um, they call it the love boat. And it's just a very unique, positive uh, vibe that, that we've created over the years. And, and that's kind of what keeps people coming back and what makes it unique from a, a land event is just the camaraderie, but also if you want to change your shoes, you want to change your outfit, it's three minutes to do that. If you want to yeah. have fantastic <laughs> food, you want to have steak and lobster and uh, Italian and sushi, that's all within a three minute walk of anywhere on the ship. If you want six, you know, 5 a.m. Yeah. pizza when the sun, before the sun comes up, you want to grab pizza or whatever, like there's ice cream or like whatever. So everything's all there, it's all included, and that's and it's the best value in the festival game as well when you start to add up like what all the inclusions are versus a bottom reel, as you mentioned, or some of the other ones. So it's all of the great stuff of a cruise and none of the stuff that people don't like about festivals, <clears> meaning <throat> the bathrooms and the food access yeah, exactly. and, and all this kind of stuff. Like this is this is yep. a Norwegian cruise line, you said, right? No, uh, this one's on Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean, yeah, excuse Royal me. Royal Caribbean, yes, yes. Yes, uh, Norwegian will Nor now... We'll no we longer be a Norwegian. sponsored podcast. Yeah, they're fired. But no, I'm just kidding. No, we were Norwegian Cruise Lights charter partner of the year. I love that. We actually are chartering the Norwegian Jewel for our group cruise Cabo, which is from Los Angeles mm. to Cabo, October 19 to 24. And that goes on sale uh, January 5 at uh, noon PST. Oh, my God. So uh, good, good shout out to Norwegian. Perfect. Segment. Yeah, big shout. There we go. There we go. Royal Caribbean, Norwegian. <laughs> they get sponsored. And, uh, they get sponsored again. I'm going to have to put a stock ticker up here now to, uh, to start showing all these cruise lines. Every time that Jason talks about one of them, the stock uh, ticks up stock. another nickel. So well done. Exactly. So we talked about the boat. Now take me on to land. What is that experience like? Are we, are we, this, this is now we're taking the kind of groove cruise onto the land, mm -hmm. onto Groove Island. But are we still going to have that intimate feel? Is it still going to be that culture and that family that you talked about earlier? Absolutely. So yeah, Groove Island was a basically a takeover or a, um, a fully immersive experience is what we call it of Catalina Island, which we've been to a couple times on Groove Cruise. And I've always had this dream and this vision of what it would be like to do a multi-day experience on Catalina because it's one of the most beautiful places, not just in the U.S., but in the world. And it just shocks me how many people that even live on the West Coast that haven't been to Catalina. It's just, it boggles my mind. It's stunning. And uh, so finally talked the Catalina Island Company into allowing us to do it. And uh, for the most part, we rented uh, all the hotels, uh, the Airbnbs, the campground, the beach club, the casino, ferries, yachts, helicopters. It was in September of 2019. And we do hope to bring it back. And uh, it's just not happening this year. Maybe next year, but probably 23. You know, and that's sort of that thing there when you were saying before, like, oh, because a couple of people got sick recently on a cruise line, it comes up, right? But it's yeah. because of this when it's, again, it's just the cruises were unfortunately, uh, you know, going uh, foot in sock <laughs> into, the, uh, into the, the pandemic. It was like it was going hand in hand. So, right. and, and the same thing with, with, with festivals that, uh, that have gone, because the fire Festival was such a disaster, other festivals have had to like really say, well, uh, here's our book. You know, we're going to open up. We're going to show you exactly what it's going to be. And I mean, because beforehand, I mean, they had those famous promotional videos that look like these guys had they they had the world, uh, you know, by the by the balls. And it was and it was, it was a sold so many tickets. It was really amazing. I yeah. can't believe so many people bought it in the beginning. I was just like, wow. Right. And you guys were doing, you guys, so you must have been called for comment on this thing when this happened, I would imagine. Oh, for sure. For sure. They actually, they, uh, I forgot the guy's name, McFarland or whatever. He actually called our office. We shared an office with a company that owns 12 cruise ships. And one of their ships was in the Bahamas at the time, fully staffed. And so they called the office and asked uh, to, that they, they said that he said that they needed the ship because they didn't have anywhere for the artists or the staff to sleep. And I'm just like, unless the guy wires the money to your account, like immediately, don't even talk to the guy. And he ended up not sending the wire and he ended up not having anywhere for the artists and the staff to sleep. 
So I don't know how many festival producers out there will see this, but the first thing that you do before you even put your tickets on sale or your hotels on sale, if you've got hotel deals, is you make sure that you have enough place for your artists and your staff to sleep. That's like festival producer 101. Uh, and <laughs> the guy's literally the a week the the event. <laughs> Yeah, the guy's literally a week before the event and doesn't have a... And the, and the point yeah. that he did it, like, cancel it before people flew there, and he, it was just ridiculous. The whole thing was just ridiculous. And it raised our insurance. It raised our merchant account. Like, it was it was a, it was an industry-wide disaster because of this idiot that, like, made these made these moves. And, I mean, I kind of get it, but, yeah, he made some really bad decisions. Yeah, and that was it, right? It, so it changed. It, it, it increased costs for you and for every other festival out there. And, like, it's not... It did. This isn't like a victimless crime. People, are, he's like, oh, well, everyone's going to get their money back. It's like, well, on, on top of that, there, everybody else in the industry is now going to be painted with that brush. Uh, yeah. And there are honest, good operators like Groove Crews out there laying that blueprint. Yeah. And yes, when you talk to the Chippewas, guys, as you're walking in the room, you're like, I can already, let me just tell you, the first thing you're going to do is make sure people have a roof over their head or, don't have the thing. Don't don't take another step forward until you know uh, people are going to have a safe, reliable place to sleep. Right. It's unbelievable. I mean, even for the Super Bowl in 2003 in Jacksonville, Jacksonville's yeah. like, you know, they're like, you guys don't have the hotels. You can't handle this. And this is before right. Airbnb. This is, you know, right. this stuff wasn't out there. So what did they do? They brought in cruise ships. Brought in cruise ships because such- they knew they needed more, more beds. Yeah. It's like common sense. Yeah. yeah, we're not we're not people are already questioning if Jacksonville can handle this. We're going to be we're going to be able to handle it. And it's going to be an, an unbelievable party. I was thinking about that. We went down there and we stayed at like the worst hotel. And I was like, we should have just stayed on one of these cruise ships. We would have met tons of people. Right. Food would have been inclusive. You know, you got yeah. a great cabin. You got water views out of every, you know, like it would have been great. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, Jacksonville's fun. I have the biggest cocktail party in the world. I've been to that a couple of times. Georgia, Georgia, uh, Georgia, Florida. Florida. Yeah. Biggest. Mm-hmm. And what is Central Michigan's biggest cocktail party? Is it when you play Western Michigan? Uh, yeah, Central Western. Yeah. Used to be when we played Michigan State, but Michigan State took us off, off the schedule because we beat them like three times in a row or two times <laughs> yes. in a row. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we can't have this anymore. The little yeah, guys are embarrassing us. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, unbelievable. And thank you for the insight and for people that are looking to learn more thank about you, this festival. You know, how do we, how do we try and grab those few remaining tickets for Orlando? First of all. Yeah. Just go to groovecruise.com. It's groove and then cruise.com. It's, pretty <laughs> so it's groove and it's cruise. Uh, right, and then there's a dot right. and then com. Okay. All right. right so it's a exactly. website. Wow, simple, tell me more about these websites. It's a website. Yeah, it's, yeah. And then you put your credit card information in. <laughs> that's it. And we guarantee so, yeah, you'll have a place it. to stay on the book. Yep, right. And no cheese sandwiches. <laughs> no cheese sandwiches. If you want a cheese sandwich at five in the morning, you can get one. But it is by your choice. It is not the only thing there. Yeah. And, and I agree. The biggest crime of the whole thing was that he did actually allow people to get on planes and come down there, yeah. which just, it just, yeah. right. It just it totally, it, it would have been, been mixed before that. Yeah. It was already bad, but he just made bad so much worse. Um, so, and then besides this uh, majestical website that you, you talk about groovecruise.com, how do we find you on, on the social medias and, uh, and, and find out more about if we want to, for those land lovers out there, I want to find out more about groove Island in Catalina and find out that it is better than the Catalina wine mixer from uh, step oh, Way better. Yeah. Way better. <laughs> way it's better. more than just wine, but great drums, great drums, <laughs> just like they had. Yeah, so Groove Island is grooveisland.com again. And uh, yeah, you can sign up for an interest list. Uh, so we don't have anything uh, right now that's announced, but we are working on Groove Island for the future. And then follow me on social media at Travel Jason. And that's pretty much across the board on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all the, all the goods. So he's in Miami ready to sail away, and we will sail away with you. On the next episode of Festival Pass Stories, Jason Bukema, CEO so and much, founder Pat. of Groove Cruise. We will see you, man. See you next All time. Right. Thanks Appreciate a lot for the time. You. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And-
and uh, stay safe out there. You got it. GroupCruise.com, if we didn't say it. All right. This is Best of Bull Pass Stories. A podcast series is told by the people who create and make festivals come to life. You will go behind the stage, kitchen, or studio door to hear the stories of passion and inspiration that started some of the world's most beloved festivals. Hear the startup stories and how an idea went from what if to what's next. What's next?